All right. We are hopefully live. I'm going to try and get into the group here so I can see the live as it goes. If you're just joining us, uh, go ahead and drop something in the comments. Say hi. If you're watching the replay, let me know. Don't let me know now because that would be very impressive if you could travel that way. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this live so I can see comments and make sure the audio is off so you don't hear an echo. Oh, hold on. There we go. <laughs> What's up, Thaddeus? So uh, if you're new to the group, this is Story Community. We are educating photographers. Today, we're going to be doing some website uh, reviews. My name's Roy Serafin. I've been doing this for a long time. Um, that is, I have no idea what the hell live play means. <laughs> um, so if you haven't already dropped your website in the comments, you still have time right now. You could drop it into the comments here. I'll add it to the, the uh, random name generator that I have going on here, and then we will um, be able to uh, go through your website as well. Super stoked to have you guys here. What's up, Nicole? Hey. Hey, Kelsey. Uh, super psyched for you guys. All right. Um, I'm going to give you guys just another quick minute here. Just drop your comment, your website if you haven't. I do have a list of, uh, let's see, so far, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. We have eight. You know, you guys are impressed. I can count. I know. I get that a lot. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm super stoked to have you guys here. Let's see. How do we get this up and running? There we go. Hey, Chochi, what's up? I haven't talked to you in a long time. Super excited to see you in this group. All right. Go ahead and drop your name in there, Chochi. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys the randomizer we're using so you guys know it's definitely legit. It is completely random. I'm not picking anyone out of, I don't have any favorites um, that I'm going to mention publicly, <laughs> but uh, we're good to go. All right. So here's a randomizer. So we have captured by K, B. Thomas photo, the rain photography. I am not going to try and pronounce that, but we have this other photography website right now. Alpha Sandrods, I think maybe I, I said I wasn't going to try it, but I tried anyway. Sarah Godfrey, uh, Ladman Studios, fearlesselopement.com, and then shochilee.com. Super excited to have you guys here. Let's get started. Where's the button for, oh, click here. All right. Let's see who's first. Who's coming up first? Hey, it looks like we have rain photography. Yay. I don't want to remove that yet because did I remove it? There it is. Let's go ahead and pull up your website here. Let's see. Am I in there? Oh, Brett, you all right. The, I'm gonna add Brett the next time. It's definitely not rigged. Okay, so perfect. We have the rain photography up here. Let's take a look and see what's going on. Uh, all right. At first glance, from an SEO standpoint, I have no idea where you're doing what you're doing. I also don't know what you're doing because you've we we opened this up and I don't see the word photography anywhere, which is bad for Google. So when so when um you pull up a website, you typically want to see like before we have to scroll or do anything, we want to see what you do and where you're doing it at, right? So somewhere in here, this should say your hometown, and then it should say what you do. You're a wedding photographer in where? If we were to look at like my site, for example, in comparison, so first thing we see right here, I'm a Tampa wedding photographer. Okay. So the very, very first thing, um, then I kind of explain, you know, the more about me kind of stuff that relates to my clients. So right off the bat, I would adjust that. Now let's see where you're kind of guiding them down. Whenever you design your website, you should have some sort of flow path uh, to getting an inquiry. Like you should be creating some sort of pathway you want them to go. So maybe it's like home to portfolio to uh, contact. Maybe it's home wedding experience contact. You need to be making sure you have a flow. So the first button that I see should go to that flow. Um, great. I'm hoping this isn't your H1 text. So if this is your H1 text, change it. Um, beautiful picture of you. Great. Still have not seen a button yet. So Looks like with what I'm reading here too, like this probably should be on an about page. Not so much as your, like, this sounds like your story of how you became a photographer. This is definitely more fit for like your about page or um, even like, a, like if you have a branding page, if it's a studio, this is just something that I would definitely put more towards that. I do like to see this though. You have more than enough copy. Like you, you clearly have written enough down here. Photographers genuinely, when we're going through our websites, we typically don't write enough. Um, and it seems like, we don't have that issue. Um, 
Great. So I'm again, keeping in track, like if I'm a customer coming to this website, I'm not scrolling down this far. Like genuinely, I'm probably not going to do all this work before I have somewhere to go. Like I may scroll down to like right here and then I'm, I'm not being served. I'm not being told where to go next. So I'm, I'm probably going to like, I might bounce. Um, so I might be putting, I might put a button either here or like I would again, make this more specific to your area and then put a button down here that kind of guides them as to where, where they should go next. Um, again, if we're looking at my site directly, I'm sending them straight to wedding experience. It's the first thing I'm, I'm, I'm sending them to. And then every time they scroll, there's another button that sends them to where I want them to go. Um, even down to here. And then we have like where I want them to go after that. So experience about me, portfolio contact is typically my uh, suggested flow pattern, or that's what I'm using right now. So uh, again, looking back at here, you got testimonials, love seeing testimonials on a homepage. Um, I like seeing them kind of sprinkled out throughout the website. I currently have a review page and I, and I feel like it's better to kind of fit them in with the experience and then like on your homepage and a few other spots as you kind of go through. Um, but I do like seeing them on the homepage. Um, I might keyword this out though. I might, I might put again, your location, which, uh, did you answer where you're at? The first head, head slider said Alberta. So are you in Alberta? Could be Alberta. Let's see. Even if, okay, so yeah, you do have it on your first slider. Here's the deal though. I didn't know that because this automatically transitions for me and it goes really fast, um, which again, if your text is going to be related to all these, like if, if the text is going to be related to each image, I would say, make sure every single text says the exact same thing, which is Alberta photographer. Uh, now this could be wedding photographer, could be whatever, you know, you want to be, um, but it should just be like, I should see that text the whole time through. Um, Realistically, though, if you want to have this kind of do this, this storytelling thing in your in your in your header, right, we should be putting uh, like Alberta photographer underneath this, like that your H1 should be below this. And then that should be like the first thing you see here. Um, what platform is this, by the way? So this, I'm, I'm guessing I feel like this might be Pixie set. Yeah, I typically so by the way, for again, for my site, I've had sliders. I've done a few different things. I don't like having the, the slider only because it, it does continuously change. And sometimes the, where the words are going to be, um, it, it gets kind of problematic. So for me personally, I've always, I like static images, but neither one's technically the wrong way. The problem becomes if you are doing this where, okay, I come to your site and I think let's, we'll try and go all the way back to the beginning. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. Actually, let's reload it. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000. Okay, it does, ha it does hang out there for a minute or it's just not moving for me. But uh, again, if it jumps right to this, I, it, that might be the first thing I see. I remember it kind of going kind of fast when we, when we first went through. Um, so again, I changed that. I'd maybe put it down here or, or again, make it static, make, it, make them all say the same thing. Um, I like what you're going for here. I like the storytelling aspect of it and like what, what your brand kind of is all about. But I think it distracts from like, Hey, this is what I do and where I'm at. Um, again, we're going to keep going down so far. Again, I have not been directed to go anywhere specific. I haven't been directed to go to a page that would, um, maybe give me some more information about you, or maybe show me some portfolio images, or maybe just give me to contact you. I haven't seen any sort of opt-in calls to actions, anyone here. So I'd definitely be adding like some CTAs calls to action somewhere through here. Um, Ah, first one. Okay, ready? Let's connect. We're going to go ahead and click on it and see where this takes us. Immediately to the contact form. Okay, so if you had had other like places where I could go, like if, you, if I had other CTAs that were kind of giving me directions um, before I got here, uh, that maybe led to more like selling pages, like portfolio or um, experience, like what makes you stand out, right? then this would be fine. But because this is the only button, essentially, I don't have that much information that I'm looking for. I haven't seen your portfolio. I don't know what your experience looks like. I don't know kind of a lot of things and I'm being sent immediately to this contact form. Um, so I, that's something I maybe, again, I would just work on that flow chart. Like where are we sending them from the homepage? They go to the homepage, they go into the portfolio, they go into the experience, they go into the about page. And then from there, where do they go? And then when do they get to the contact page? Um, so I'd be adding a lot more calls to action as they go here. Um, cause sending them immediately to that, like contact page from the homepage 
doesn't always work. It works with some clients, but I, I'd say like 80% of your clients, they need a little more selling, a um, little more like, hey, tell me about the story. What am I getting out of this? Uh, it's an opportunity to show your uniqueness, your values. I, I would definitely like adjust that. Um, okay, so let's talk about this, this next session here. Your very second call to action you have on the page. Um, by the way, three to four calls to action um, for for on your homepage is, is great. One or two is not, is not that great. You need to be reminding people what you want them to do next, just in case they do scroll down a little further. But this next CTA is actually telling them to go to, to Instagram. Now, as soon as I click on this, if it takes me to Instagram, does it even take me to Instagram? This does nothing. Okay. Typically, if this was to take me to Instagram, which by the way, I would think it would, like this is leading me to believe, ah, okay, there you go. You just have to click somewhere very specific. First thing that comes up, these little notifications. This will grab my attention faster than most of other things. I probably will leave this page. I'll go check and see exactly what's going on with those and be distracted and I'll forget your brand exists. So I actually don't recommend linking to this until all the way at the footer. And I don't recommend linking it big like this. I would show off a couple of my images, but then at the bottom, like this is all I would leave for Instagram if I'm going to keep it on there. Um, personally, I don't, I, I don't even think Maybe it's at the bottom. Yeah. So I have just like this little thing all the way at the footer, but you're scrolling for a while before you get there. Um, Instagram is not where I, I send my clients right off the bat. It just doesn't really lead to value because they're they're very easily distracted at that point, right? They're like, we're at Instagram, we're getting notifications. Uh, I might want to go see what what kind of like thing has happened with my friends or I might, get, I might have been a comment and then I'm going to go see that comment and then I'm going to forget what I was doing. And then I may end up in a whole other search thing. So you kind of just waste that person coming to the website. So a couple of things looking at your homepage, I'd add some CTAs. Um, I would be a little more clear or consistent as to where you're based. So Alberta photographer, again, don't let it change with these slides. Just have it hang somewhere either down here or just make all these slides say the same thing. Um, and then I put in an email opt-in or something here. Um, you know, maybe put a contact form on this page um, if you want to, or like a drop in your email and get my 10 best tips so that at least when they've come to your site, you haven't lost that customer forever. You can now market it to that customer. Again, maybe use it for retargeting ads. Uh, maybe you put them on a really good email series, um, but that's the, you're, you're gonna start selling to that person right from there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check in on the comments and see what's going on. So Kevin says, or, well, let's go, let's see how far I missed here. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Kelsey says, maybe, a sep maybe separate out that first slide to make it a static slider. That's a great option. Um, sites on Pixie Set, I kind of had a feeling was on Pixie Set. Um, so Pixie Set is great, but sometimes I will say structurally it's it's problematic. Like your your H1s can end up being, you can have multiple H1s because of the design structure you pick. And, and that's not great for Google. An H1 should be what your website essentially is about. Like the, the, the page you're on, what that page is specifically about. Then your H2 can be about a subcategory of that main category. And then your, pay, your H3 should be a subcategory related to the subcategory it, it was under. Um, Okay, so uh, Chochi says the homepage testimonial is also a little long, highlight a shorter section. Yeah, so when you're going through your, your testimonies, right, you should find out what the main benefit was or the main, like the, the main thing your client was really, really excited about. So if I'm reading this through, I had a birthday issue with her and this lady gave me the best experience. Um, I would even maybe modify this and put my name here instead of this lady, I'd probably put, you know, um, Marietta and say like, gave me the best experience. That'd probably be what I'd highlight there. I'm really shy when it comes to the camera. I'm super anxious. She made everything so comfortable. Definitely give her 100 out of 10. That also might be, I mean, that that's another good option. There's going to be a few options with, with some of these reviews, but I think solving the anxiety that you've given your, that, that your clients might have going to that session is going to serve you better in the long run. So um, for this one, I'd probably just make that the review that they see. Now you can always link out to where they can get full reviews. They can read the full review, but for this homepage, let's hit on the let's let's hit on the highlights. Um, okay, so Kevin says the slider with multiple large images is going to slow your uh, your page load time. Yeah, and um, with Pixie Set, you can't really adjust the like you can't really properly optimize the images um, on there. Like there, it kind of resizes your images no matter what you do. Um, that's not always done perfectly like my site load speed was fairly quick when i had pixie set but once i started getting more and more content or creating more in-depth um pages it, it kind of started to run a little slow um let's see what's going on 
Thaddeus says he's a fan of making social links only after they've submitted a contact form. Yeah, that's great. Really, there's no benefit in sending them to your Instagram. Um, you don't own the Instagram, you do own the website. So rather than getting a follower, I'd rather get an email. Um, that's a, like an email is a, that's now we have a, we have a relationship with this customer, a follower, honestly, like you could, even if they do follow you, there's no guarantee you're going to show up in their feed. So essentially <laughs> you might still lose them, even if they did like go to your Instagram and didn't get distracted by anything else. Um, so, uh, a few other things I might add in here, I might, I might add some sections like that offer resources, like write a blog post or something similar, maybe even a page about how you create comfort, like comfort in your clients, um, about your favorite locations in the area that you're shooting in. Um, really anything that's going to add like a contextual clue to one, your area, and also provide a resource so that they stay in your website a little bit longer. Um, again, though, I do like seeing longer copy. It's great. Um, it's funny, but a lot of times you can actually outrank people just because you're more thorough, right? It's not like you're not using keywords in those in those additional copy, but if you're only writing bullet points um, and they just happen to have your keywords in them, it's not going to do nearly as well as if you had your keywords inside of um, and more than enough copy. Um, I try and shoot for like, you know, 800 to 1500 on home pages. You can go even more than that if you want to, but um, that's how many words we should have on those home pages. Okay. That was Marietta. We're gonna go ahead and bump from here. Um, so I'm gonna add Brett into the end, into the mix. We're gonna get rid of the rain photography because we just did them. Um, let me copy Brett's comment. I saw it all the way up here. Perfect. Oh, Brett, I know you've been doing a ton of work on your site, so I'm kind of, I would like to go through it at some point. Um, <laughs> more because I haven't done it in a little bit. Let's go ahead and do the randomizer here. We're gonna click on it. It's gonna spin. <clears throat> All right. Let's see if I can just copy it. Okay, and now you're out of the running. So let's go ahead and drop this in here. Let's take a look. Photographs filled with what matters. Okay, so right off the bat, we have a pretty major slider issue. You don't really want to have this slider the entire like length of, of your of your main page, right? especially if your button is in white and then kind of goes over white images because you can lose this button. There's a few images where it's kind of hard to see. Photographs filled with what matters. Again, we also don't know what you're doing and where you're doing it. We know photographs are involved, but I don't know if you're filling them with Photoshopped Disney characters or like what's going on here. I don't know if you're the actual photographer or if you're going to be the person that is like doing something unrelated. So I would like to see area wedding photographer or whatever that would be like best for your area. So you do a little keyword research. It could be like wedding photographer in city state or whatever. Uh, but I'd like to see that first. I'd like that be the first thing I see. Google wants to see that too. I'd also put your brand name somewhere around here. Um, that way, again, Google does when it's looking at a website, it does actually take into account the brand name plus the, plus the uh, related context that the page should be giving it through H1s. So um, I would make this slider like 70%. Like, so like right where, where the P kind of connects to the, the back line here, right where the cursor is, I would probably make this um, kind of end there so they, they can see that there's more going on. Um, I do, I enjoy your brand, the, your logo though, looks good. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, I used to be a, a branding designer back in the day uh, prior to weddings, but uh, it, I do enjoy a good logo. I just, it stands out. It's nice once I see it. <laughs> so again, uh, Make that slider just a little bit smaller. Okay, so you're a Nashville wedding photographer. Good. This is more about what we're talking about. Again, I want to see that here without scrolling. I don't want to have to scroll and find out that I'm at the right place. Um, imagine photographs filled with the things that matter the most. I probably would put the moments rather than the things just as a copywriting thing. Um, moments kind of connect a little better. The things that matter the most is, is a little... I, I don't know. I, for me, I would just put moments. That's where I come in by focusing on moments. See, you put moments down here. So I put moments up here of true emotion and the connections with the people that you most treasure. You'll be able to look back on your wedding with the feeling that you've lived in the moment and that you have photographs that fill your soul with warmth. I like that. Um, definitely. I connected with a lot of that copy that was going on here. And again, we're not really copy light here. Okay. Um, he, you are bumping straight into a, like a, like a client review. And I, and I think like 
before I hit this, I want to learn more about your brand. Um, so like taking it back to where we're at here, um, this is actually my about me section on this particular page, but I basically tell a story, give them enough information on what drives me as a photographer, kind of like what you do with your first paragraph. Then I show off some authority. And then I talk about even more, you know, more things that are directly related to them. Um, this is kind of like, I'd put this as like they're looking forward sequence. Like this is what they should be looking forward to. Um, kind of problem solving here. Um, and then maybe like, like then after this is where I think you have a little more free where you put like a testimony or something like right, like right first thing. I, it's just unnecessary. I don't think we need it. Um, but let's see what you have in here. Blake was hands down the best, best and happiest decision we made. I like that you're, you're bolding some of these words. You're kind of making them bigger, more attention. He is warm, hilarious, attentive, respectful, obviously extremely talented and greatly skilled, but all around just a great person to trust and have around for a wedding. I think personally, you could just, you could have just had this section right here. Like this could be the entire review for this, for this first one, like hit me with the highlights. Um, I think that you did a great job of showing what text was important through here, but really, unless I needed to know more, I think this, this really does solidify. You were the best decision and happiest decision of the wedding. Now, keep in mind, they also decided to marry each other at their wedding. So that statement has a lot more weight, uh, <laughs> a lot more weight, um, to it. <laughs> All right. So let's keep going down. All right. looks like we have a, is this like a highlight video? See what happens. I'm going to click on it. It's two minutes and 34 seconds long. Yeah, so it's a highlight reel. This is a great way to grab your customer's attention. It also gives them something to stay on the page. Um, having a video right here actually is also beneficial if you're trying to, um, you want to keep, you want to hold that bounce rate back, right? Because we're going to be here. I'm going to click on this. Like I'm going to click on it and find out. Now I will say, um, I've seen these work better when they're a little more exciting at first. Like you kind of pull me in first and then you can go kind of the slower stuff. Um, but I, I, I will say like, this is just a great option. You're going to keep people on this, on this page, which helps your balance rate, which also shows off your images, which from what I can see right now are absolutely gorgeous. These are solid. Um, I feel like this call to action is kind of pointless. Um, I would maybe put it like, if, I, if I'm going to put it up here, I, I, if I'm going to put it somewhere, I'm probably going to put it up here. Um, but again, the play button kind of does that, does it for, for you. Um, I know, I don't know about Vimeo, but I know some of these like online webs, like web hosting things for video actually allow you to put like a button in the center. Um, and then just having a big play button there might also cause more clicks if that's what your goal is. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think this is a great section as we're kind of going through. Um, I still haven't been directed to go anywhere else, but that's okay because we're still, we're doing like a fairly good job of selling. Like this is, a pretty easy way to see what kind of images you take, which again, just having clicked through a couple of these, like very, very solid work. Um, okay. So right here, I love that you have this, but I want to see you give me more context to it. So like explain what these steps are for right now, you're giving me directions without actually telling me what I'm doing. So I, I would put like something like, I think uh, where to go from here is one of them I've had just better, like just something that gives me context when I'm learning. Like you could put the process, you could put really anything here, but give me a little, give me some sort of header, like a subsection that explains what this is about. Um, step one, check out the portfolio. Love it. You're going, so your, your funnel right now is portfolio about, um, and then experience if they're going to go through all three of them, but realistically portfolio, and then probably about or contact is, is where they're going to do most of the time. I'm curious, do you uh, use analytics to kind of figure all this stuff out? Like you, are you watching where people are going? Mostly like full of paragraphs. Uh, I'm not seeing any sort of answer here. All right, well, we'll continue on. Um, just let me know if you're if you're going into analytics and you're seeing where your traffic is going and what they're like, which landing pages they're going to from there. Um, I'd be curious to see like what that how that flow is working out. Um, if you do create a flow like this, it's always good to go back and check and make sure that people are actually taking the pathway that you want them to take. Um, let's chat. Um, you might want to try this too. I've noticed that buttons like this, where it's, it, you know, it's kind of like a, it's a, it's just an outline. And then the words in the middle, I've noticed that they don't get nearly as many clicks when I, it, versus when I have something that's like more bold, so like a, a darker color and then a lighter contrast thing. 
um, or light, lighter text color, <clears throat> but I, cause they, they, they tend to draw more attention. That's just a, it's just something I noticed once I, I switched over cause I used to have buttons that were fairly similar. Um, so that might be something I play with again though, right now, like, I, I really don't have a ton of like, Oh, we need to fix this. Cause it's, it's messed up. I I'm seeing you're writing a lot of a decent amount of copy. You've got a, a few different interesting selling points here. Ready for a stress-free experience. Excellent. Direct benefit to the client. You are removing risk right away. We're going, hey, if I'm your photographer, you don't have to worry about stress. You're gonna, there's going to be no stress. Now, um, from there, I would probably put, great, let's talk. So like, for ready for a stress-free experience, here's what you do. Um, so I love to connect with all my people through a Zoom meeting. I have a special pre presentation for you. Plus, this is how I can figure out how I can serve you to the best of my ability. This is a little clunky to me. Um, so I, I like I would maybe reword how this is presented. So I'd say something along the lines of like, um, every couple is different, which means every story is told differently. I need to meet with you first over Zoom to find out the things that you're that are most important to you. Um, fill out the, uh, fill out the form below so we can get started on that process. Like that just sounds a little clear right off the, like I'm spitballing obviously. <laughs> um, but that sounds a lot clearer than, than this is like, I love to connect with all the people I meet through a zoom meeting. That's cool. That's more speaking from what your benefit is from it. I would try and maybe link back towards there. I have a special presentation for you. Uh, it just sounds a little creepy. I'm gonna be honest. Like, I, I don't know why, but I have a special presentation for you. It just doesn't sound inviting. Um, Plus, this is how I can figure out how I can serve you to the best of my ability. I do like that you're putting, this is how I can serve you to the best of my ability, but I just think there's a cleaner way of kind of putting it out. So I, I maybe rework this a little bit, but I like it. So, so far, as, as far as we go, um, the first button you show me on the page, that's an obvious button, I should say. Um, it's taking me directly to the contact form, but your preferred methodology, again, where to go next, some, something like that is to go to the portfolio. Let's take a look at your portfolio and make sure that when we get here, we're not immediately distracted. Um, I'm a really big fan of portfolios that I don't have to scroll away from. Okay. Like I like to just show me your best 30 images and then send me to the next, the next step. Um, scrolling down to see all these is fine. Like, I think you'd be better served without this header and just having this right here, the people and the moments, and then I can click through there and then either learn more about, uh, you as a photographer, or maybe even your experience, whatever it's going to be. Um, and then, um, just directly going to an inquiry. Now I, I will say, um, I might test these buttons and try different calls to action, you know, um, get more information might work better here. Um, then, then ready to chat, ready to chat just sounds a little too like laid back to me. Um, but yeah, then you have a contact form on here. I think that's fine. You can put a contact form on just about any page in your website. Uh, if you want, I, I think that this is this is totally fine. I will say though, if if if, if uh, I would, I, I would maybe take this button, this ready chat button, and instead of having it load all the way to this contact form, um, you can do a thing where you you create an anchor for this section of the page. I'd click that button and scroll down, uh, so it would just scroll down to this. So they're not actually actually having to reload. It just basically bumps them from here to here. Um, that's just like, that's just one thing. I would try and make the submit button a little more obvious if you can. Uh, I'm going to guess Pixie set is where, where we're at here. I'm not even sure if he's here, to be honest. Is, is Blake in here? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, oh, hey, we tried. Um, so, again, I'm going to go back to the homepage real quick and just scroll through the rest of it. Okay, so we have the contact form. Nashville is our home. I live in Nashville, explore, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, exploring Nashville so I can learn it like the back of my hand. Nashville has become my home and I never plan to leave. Seriously, what's not to love? Nashville. Okay, so we're doing a little bit of keyword stuffing here. <laughs> um, and we're not doing it in like a natural way. We're really just saying Nashville as many times as we possibly can. Um, there are different ways you can do this, okay? So if you're gonna go in and, and you wanna have Nashville come up a little bit more, um, you can do something like this. Like I have featured Tampa Bay wedding venues. You could do featured Nashville wedding venues. Um, you could do... Uh, and you can fit these in relatively clearly. Um, so again, even if you look at these like these subdescriptions, La Meridian is a historic wedding venue in Tampa. That's an alternative version of that keyword. Um, same thing for the rest of these. This is just a different way of doing what you're doing without sounding too obvious as to being keyword stopping. Because like, let's see, 
one Nashville, two Nashville, three Nashville, four Nashville, five Nashville, five Nashville is in a three sentence structure or four sentence structure. It's like, this is just not enough text to justify saying Nashville that many times. Um, it can actually negatively impact your ranking because it looks like keyword stuffing. All right. Check the comments one more time. Hey, Courtney, hope that Zoom review went really well. We're going to go ahead and go to the next person uh, via my wonderful random wheel here. Let's see what happens. Apparently it makes a noise too. I can't hear it from the headphones, but I, I just barely heard it. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was going to do there. It looked like it was just going to hang out on the, on the side. All right, Thaddeus, let's take a look here. See what you got going on. Just make sure. I know he's in the comments, but just make sure. Thaddeus, you still here? <laughs> Buy a hair, yeah. Okay. Oh, Courtney, good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. That uh, that we say Zoom review. Your meeting went well. I don't remember if it was on Zoom or in person. A Zoom review, yeah. All right, I was right. Okay, I'm gonna reload this again because I feel like it. It's doing its own thing. Okay. Love that first image. I think we've talked about that a few times. Like I just, I, I think this is a really great image. His smile is really genuine. Uh, right. Let's see. Connecticut wedding photographer this funny, genuine, and pumped as fuck for your wedding. <laughs> ah, Thaddeus, you're great. Um, <laughs> that might be on the edge. Uh, it would be on the edge for me. Uh, I do swear with my clients, but I don't necessarily jump right in right at the bat like the top of the wedding page it's your call i mean this is going to be like a this is going to be like the ideal client kind of um mindset here uh I, I will ask though is this connecticut wedding photographer that is funny genuine and pumped as fuck for your wedding like is that um is that your h1 because if it is your h1 it really does need to be i don't know if i'd, I'd, I'd put this all as my h1 this by itself, the Connecticut wedding photographer should be your age one. Anyway, continuing on. So Thaddeus offers genuine, authentic, and meaningful wedding photography for fun, laid-back couples who live life against the grain. Love that. That's really unique. Life against the grain. Um, listen, I get it. Posing all day for photos sounds like a damn nightmare, but if candid and genuine moments are your fucking jam, I got you. <laughs> I, I Now I understand the full send post that was in the group earlier. <laughs> This is more than just photographs. It's about trusting each other. This my style of photography captures your genuine humanity, and in these moments, genuine humanity in these moments of raw, unimaginable emotion. Um, that's a little wordy. My style of photography captures your genuine humanity. I put it like in fleeting moments. If that were me, but totally your call. You don't have to. Under, you don't have to be a couple who fears their wedding photographer. You don't have to be that couple who fears their wedding photographer won't understand them because honestly, you won't find a more dedicated and loyal photographer in the room. Okay, this is just a good rule in life. If you have to tell them you're the best, you're not the best. So you don't need to, you don't need to do this. Um, the way, at least the way you're doing it, it's a little clunky, right? You don't have to be the photographer. You don't have to be afraid your photographer won't understand them. I, I would say you don't have to worry about judgment. There is no judgment coming from me or so, like something along that line because like your, your fear that you're putting them is that they're going to be judged because they're going to be misunderstood right they're not going to be understood by the photographer so they're going to have some sort of negative experience coming from that but then you finish it with because honestly you won't find a more dedicated and loyal photographer in the room that answer does not belong to that question they're going to fear their wedding photographer won't understand them. And you just said, I'm dedicated and loyal. You didn't say you're going to understand them in any way, shape, or form. So it doesn't solve the problem you're trying to solve here. Let's continue on. So if you want your wedding moments to feel awkward and lifeless, resulting in a gallery full of disappointment and regret every time you look back on them to be the legacy you leave behind, feel free to swipe left. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you want your wedding moments to feel awkward and lifeless. Uh, I don't think that it's not going to speak to anyone specifically. Um, <laughs> because no one wants that. No one's coming here. Even if they're, even if they're not worried about photos, even if they're not super concerned about the photos, they don't want their wedding moments to feel awkward and life lifeless resulting 
in a gallery full of disappointment and regret every time you look at back on them. Also, I think you're giving them way more pro like you're giving way too many problems in this copy. Like we are, we are way, way, way too on uh, like hanging on the negatives. Um, I do think like including something like feel free to swipe left. That's funny, but I would write this in a way where it sounds positive. So it's like, I would maybe even write the opposite of this. So if you want your wedding moments, if you want your wedding moments to feel awkward and lifeless. So if you want candid and real moments resulting in a gallery full of memories, every time you look back on them, feel free to swipe right or something. Like, I don't know. I just don't, or if you don't want that, it's like, it's, it's too negative basically. <laughs> Go work on this. Um, okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. So Kelly actually, or Kelsey actually said it better than I did because this is, uh, <laughs> this is a bit much. All right. So otherwise let's party on Garth again. I love the personality here. I just think you, you're, you're like putting so much negativity before this, uh, raise those glasses, pull each other close, tell the DJ to crank it the fuck up and have the time of your life, um, with the people you love the most. I will say, okay, like obviously you guys have been in this group long enough, most of you, and Thaddeus, you've worked with me directly. Um, you're, like I'm coaching you now. You know I swear, okay? You know I swear with my clients. I swear with like with uh, my couples. I swear with my coaching students. Like it does happen. Um, but there is a point where you're like, there's intelligent swearing, okay? There is swearing um, <laughs> where you are um, like you're, you're providing emphasis and then there's swearing just to swear. And to me, this particular sentence feels like we're swearing just to swear. I think you could get the exact same emotion out of tell the DJ to crank it up and have the time of your life with the people you love most. Um, it, that's just me, but Hey, just be yourselves and I'll do the rest. Love that. That's your brand promise. Um, I would even put maybe like my brand promise is this, be, you can be yourselves and I'll do the rest. Um, already decided to go full send. Let's chat. Okay. So then this is going to take me to your contact form, right? Cool. Connection is everything. Our chemistry together is a catalyst to an unforgettable experience that will showcase your uniqueness in your own photos. I just put your story. Um, you won't find me taking on every inquiry as I, that just doesn't sound nice. <laughs> you won't find me taking on every inquiry as I only take on 20 weddings a year. And honestly, I'm not the photographer for everyone. There's just a nicer way of putting that. Um, I, it, it sounds like you won't find me taking every inquiry that comes in. It just, I, it sounds a little braggy to me. Um, I would love to hear more about what you're fixing to do. I would love to hear more about what you're dreaming of your wedding. I would love to hear more about your wedding day. I would love to hear more about, uh, like be specific. Um, please fill out this form. I'd put next steps, next steps are to fill out this form and I'll be in touch faster than it takes you to get into your yoga pants. Uh, when you get more busy, when you have 20 couples coming in here, you're not going to be able to, to actually, uh, you're not gonna be able to deliver on this promise. You just said, I will be in touch faster than it takes you to get into your yoga pants. You're not going to be that fast. Just generally speaking, you're not. You're going to have to look over the inquiry. You're going to have to check the date. You're going to have to make sure that you have that date available. Then you're going to have to email them back. It's not going to be that fast. You're immediately giving them a promise that you're then breaking, which is just not a great way to start a relationship. I don't think um, that I'd keep this in. I'd, I, I would maybe modify that as well. <laughs> I just noticed a question at the bottom. Uh, your contact form, first name, last name, fiance, first name, last name. I'd probably just put fiance in one in one bar so it's it looks like less questions um email address select date i select approximate date because they may not have a date yet so i don't i don't use the calendar thing on mine because they don't they don't necessarily know all the time um uh, especially if you're going to be doing something where you're getting people from venues like they don't they don't know they don't even have their venue picked in some cases um phone number is great wedding location is great describe you how important wedding photography is to you it's decent um it doesn't for me, this doesn't actually serve a purpose to the question. Like if they're reaching out to me, wedding photography is important to them. Okay. It's just, it just is what it is. Right. And so I like asking, um, what about my work resonated with you? Um, how did you find me? Like a bunch of questions that actually serve more like concrete evidence. Like I, like if they, okay. So if they say how they found me, then I know which, which platform the lead came from, which means I can either put more or less effort into that platform. If I ask them what what about my work resonated with them the most, and they say the copy, then I know that my copy is really strong. If they say the images are great and they feel really candid, then I know that my images are on point with this. However, 
when I just say how important are what is wedding photography to you, I really don't think it actually serves a purpose. I had this question for a long time. I, I either got ones or tens. Okay. Uh, or I, I either got all tens or they just didn't know what to put here. So I, I just don't bother with it. It's not a great question. Uh, give me the wedding day rundown. I don't even know what that means. So I'm assuming you want a timeline based off of that question. That's not great either. Um, anything else I should know, tradition, special dances, et cetera. I, I wouldn't even, I don't, don't answer the question for them. Anything else I should know, anything that's important to you, you should tell me. They'll answer that for you. Don't tell them tradition, special dances, et cetera. Let, let it be open. Let it be free. Whatever they type is what they type. Okay. Uh, most important question is a hot dog, a sandwich. I might hire you just because you asked me this question. I, it's, a, it's fantastic. Love it. Um, all right. Let's go back to your homepage because we only went down to where we at. I decided to go full send, dedicated and loyal, fueled by a passion, absurd amount of coffee. I give a shit about you more than my Insta reel. I actually really enjoy that. Like that, I like that speaks to me. I'm here to make sure um, your extraordinary and genuine moments. We're getting, we're describing things a little too much. Like I, candid moments, by the way, is probably something your clients are going to say a little more often. I find most of the time that's the word my clients tend to pull up. You could ask your past clients the same thing. Um, but I, they're not going to say extraordinary and genuine moments. Um, you want to try and speak to your, your, your ideal client in your, in, in the way that they speak, if that makes sense. Um, I'm basically a game genie for your wedding photography. Yeah. I don't know what that means at all. I have, I genuinely have no idea what that means. <laughs> Courtney says my, uh, my Instagram is a very sad place. If you're looking for updates, same. Um, yeah, so, uh, Thaddeus said, um, <laughs> well, Kev, actually Kevin's talking about the date field. You can still have a date field and just leave it as general text answer, uh, answer rather than a calendar drop down is all. Yeah. So I'm saying they could, they, you still ask them for the date, but I would leave it as like a text box rather than an actual drop down. Just, it's just a little cleaner. <laughs> you don't know what a game genie is. Your friendship is older. Listen, I'm not that into games. I have a PlayStation that I think I touched. Maybe I, I turn that thing on maybe twice a year. Uh, it's basically just a paperweight. Um, <laughs> all right. So then this is taking to your, this is going to take me to your about page, dedicated and loyal. By the way, um, I would say I like, let's talk about, let's directly describe what this page is about. Let's, let's specifically say like, learn more about me. This is the, like, what's the purpose of going to this page? Dedicated and loyal doesn't really do that for me. That just describes you, um, which I should get from your copy anyway. Uh, so I would adjust that. Investment and value, see the value. It sounds really, really salesy. Um, value, okay, hold on. Is this just not showing? There it is. By the way, sometimes we'll show it, you will have, um, you can have like layout issues where like you can't, it doesn't, properly move things over so the window is not perfectly big enough this is what your actual client will see and unless they've been in web design they don't necessarily always know and they always want to just kind of scroll to the side which they, they typically can't do uh, so that can be problematic as well i value the hardworking, laid-back couples who like me okay what do they value what is your ideal client value right start start speaking to that it's not about you your client is the main like if this is a movie your client is the main character okay it's the main character you're just part, you're like part of the machine to help them get to where they need to go. Um, like if they were defusing a bomb, like let's say it's an action movie, they're just, they're defusing a bomb. You're the guy on the phone that answers that, that tells them what to do. Um, I, this, in this case, this just doesn't speak to them that way. Each genuine and important intentional moment is a part of your story, a story that when you're holding it in your hands, it tells it better than James Earl Jones was narrating it to you. Yeah. I just reworked this a little bit. Um, start writing from a benefits perspective from your clients and avoid I statements. Preserve your legacy. Cinema meets humanity. Um, cinema is related to movies, and I know for a fact you don't shoot you don't shoot films. So I would say um, maybe rework that. I like what you're going for, but I think that there's just a, there's just a clear way to say that. You get one shot at this. We can't live forever, but being remembered that's the next best thing. Um. I don't know that your genuine your your clients also like thinking that they're they're worried about being remembered or um, living forever. I, I don't think those are things that they're they're genuinely worried about. Um, then you're going to your contact form. It's fine. Recommended blogs for you. Yeah, see, this is great. 
Um, I would put recommended resources for my area. So if, you're, if your main key term is um, Connecticut, I would put uh, Connecticut wedding planning resources or something like that, because it's probably a keyword. Do a little keyword research and find out. All right, we're going to jump ahead. Go on to the next person here. This will probably be like the last one. One of the last ones, I'm not sure. We may do one more. You guys leave a lot of comments, so I'll, I'll do one more. Hey, it's Jochi. Pumped. Let's get this going. <laughs> Brett. <laughs> we are Yoda, the client is Luke Skywalker. Perfect. Yeah, that's a that's 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 a great way to look at it. All right, Chochi, let's take a look at your website. It's been a minute. I think I, I think I've been on here before, back in the uh, the uh, Ben Hartley Group coaching days. Um, oh, we got here. We got Meet Chochi portfolio investment. Great contact is highlighted. Love that. All right. So, like I said, this is she's following really really good rules here. Like the the sliders only about seventy percent, maybe sixty percent in this case of the page. So I can see the full image. It's, it's full width, but I also can tell where she's doing her work. She's a Charlottesville wedding. Uh, she's a Charlottesville wedding photography. Um, so sometimes you'll find in your keyword research that the word photographer or photography may have more or less volume. If photography has more volume, it's totally fine to put photography versus photographer. Um, hopefully you did that intentionally and didn't just like assume that photography would be a bigger hit, but I, I trust you, Choji. I feel like you did, you did some research. Okay, so genuine moments for time and timeless portraits for joyful couples. Love it. So Chochi likes working with happy people. Uh, I, I I highly recommend trying to work with happy people. Um, <laughs> this is great. I get it. You don't want to remember your wedding through a bunch of awkward, overly staged stuff. Good. We're avoiding a pain point. That's our pain point. Working with me means you'll be able to enjoy the food, dance the night away, and spend time with people who mean the most to you. What I actually like about this is this is a, this is a problem that most couples actually do run into, right? Like they, they don't typically, some couples genuinely don't actually get to eat the food that they spent a bunch of time picking and then they paid a bunch of money to have um, done. So as you're saying with her, you get that. I like it. It's good. It'll speak to foodies, which I imagine maybe now if I'm trying to build a client personal persona off of Chochi's paragraphs here, she likes working with happy couples or maybe foodies or at least enjoy eating. I don't know. <laughs> Um, dance the night away and spend time with the people that mean the most to you. Love that. Um, all about capturing the day as it unfolds, but it'll also help you to step in to help you look your best. Okay. So this is great. Um, posing has become this like negative word, right? Uh, we're all afraid of posing, but posing is not necessarily a negative thing. Um, actually Jerry Jonas, uh, is a photographer. You can learn great things from, and, and he kind of points out that posing essentially is like the, it's kind of like makeup, right? Like makeup, putting on makeup obviously takes a bunch of time. It's, uh, it, but the results are great. Like it makes you look much better, but it takes, it takes a ton of time. doesn't mean it's a negative thing, right? Cause obviously they're, they're all like most of these couples, brides specifically are paying for makeup artists. They're getting this done. They want to look their best. That's what posing does. Cho Chochi answers that problem. Like she says, listen, you're going to get to be in the moment, but then I'm going to pull you back out when needed and present you in, in your best state. Love it. Candid storytelling, natural, timeless portraits. So these two things work really well for me. I love this. So relax, have fun, and take in every moment. Know those one, know all those once in a lifetime memories are preserved for you to relive again and again. Read on to learn more and get connected. I can't wait to meet you. I would actually say all the way up until this point, I had no copy issues. Okay, not a single one. I love this statement. The so relax and take in every moment. I just want you to be more specific and. Um, I want you to send them somewhere. Okay. So put a button here. Um, maybe, uh, maybe send them to your, to your very next page. Looks like for you is, I don't know. Is this your portfolio? I'm guessing explore more, more moments and portraits is your portfolio. <laughs> um, so maybe you want to send them there. Um, I, that way you're, 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 you're speaking to them. You've solved the problem for them. And then you're immediately showing them what the solution is going to be. Um, or you could throw in one of those videos. I know a lot of people used to do those. Um, by the way, where this section is here, we're looking at where you're, where you've been featured. This is a great spot to actually fit a keyword in. So again, we're looking back on what I've done here. Um, where we go. Okay. Tampa wedding photography, right. Fit it in there. Um, that's something you could do. You could do here. Uh, you could put published an award-winning, uh, Charlottesville wedding photography or whatever. You could just call it out. It's just an option for you to put in another keyword that 
may or may not have some decent ranking to it. I would take a look, maybe see if you can't um, creatively word it. Okay, so um, we're starting here. Love this. This is a great call to action. I like it. Start here. This is the first step. It's very clear to the client. You're not saying click here because everyone else says click here. This is like start here. Love it. All right, explore more portraits in moments. I'm going to guess we're going to head out to the portfolio. Yeah. And so she's already got this laid out perfectly. She's got, it's a very, very simple. This, the intention of this page is not to rank. You're not going to rank your portfolio. Okay. That's not the intention of doing it. You're not going to try and build a bunch of traffic onto your portfolio that wasn't already on your website because you want to sell based on your unique brand values before you sell on your, on your direct image values. Um, your, your direct images, I guess. Um, because everyone, everyone can take great photos, but you can only sell the way you sell. You can only provide the experience that you, that you provide. So getting them there first is great. So again, Chochi has this wonderful portfolio. I've seen her work before. I already know she's a solid photographer. Um, she's showing a little bit of emotion. She's, she's showing genuine. Yeah. Like what's, I wasn't expecting a bread fighting, like sword thing. Um, <laughs> she's showing real moments from weddings. Like this is clearly not from a style shoot, right? This is a genuine prayer moment. This is one of her more, more posed moments, um, but it has a little bit of candidness with it. It's like a pose and prompt, right? Again, this is definitely 100% candid. Maybe she had the lineup first, but then like she, she just planned ahead for the, for the actual candid moment. Um, so this is great. And then from here, we're going to go to meet, which is your next set and your, your thing. Okay, a lot of copy here. So um, Chochi... Um, Charlottesville foodie desert queen. Yeah. See, I knew you were a foodie. Okay. Desert queen and wedding photographer or dessert queen, not desert queen, dessert queen. I can read. Definitely went to, went to public school. Sorry guys. Uh, wedding photographer. <laughs> You're here because you want to connect with an awesome wedding photographer. You don't want some stranger following you around with a camera, but a friend invested in capturing your story. Someone who understands that you're looking for. So what's really great is she's not like the, the part of the about me so far, right. That's been like, here is that you're, you're, this is the about me so far is this, this is actually about them. <laughs> it's describing you, but it's describing you in the benefits of what they should be seeing. So this is a benefit driven uh, piece of copy. It's exactly what I strive to take care of for my couples. You deserve to have genuine artwork that really means something to you. Enjoy a peace of mind to just relax and enjoy your day because you know, I'll be there to capture your wedding celebration in its entirety. So you'll always be able to relive those moments. Awesome. Love it. Um, from here, right here, I'd say, contact me. I'd put a button in, contact me get them going to that next stage. It doesn't matter if they read the rest of this, um, if you can get them to just contact you from that, okay? Um, so I, what I like to do, by the way, this is kind of like every time I scroll, I, I want like, if I have to do a scroll, I wanna see another button come up. So you finish a section, button, finish a section, button. We're just trying to get as many call to actions as we can so they know what that next step is. And it's like a repeated pattern. Um, we're kind of training them as they go through the site. Uh, this is super long. I'm not going to read all of this, um, but I, I, I liked, I like this. And my, my suggestion is to go straight here and add a uh, button. Okay. Um, in their words, we actually loved having, so um, there is a benefit to speaking from your personality, like, like labeling things that way. So in their words, uh, there also is a, um, at least in your homepage, I don't know if you put these on your homepage as well, but there is also a keyword that you could fit here um, for in their words. So uh, wedding photographer reviews, Charlotte, Charlottesville wedding photographer reviews is probably something that's going to come, that's going to come up. You could technically fit it here or at the very least, like put a smaller text, like at the bottom here so that it comes up there and they know what it is. But if you can set it as an H2, it's even better because that gives Google some context for what we're doing. All right, so going down here, more about me. This is where you get into the actual genuine about me stuff. This section of your copy primarily talks about the benefits of your clients, like the benefit of working with you to your clients. Then this is more like your, your um, typical like about me stuff, huge sweet tooth, all that kind of stuff, great. Let's head back to your homepage. Double check one more time what's going on here. Okay, so these are her three steps. We're going to go uh, portfolio, about, and then inv uh, investment on process and prices. So uh, I like that. I'm curious. Do you talk about your process on your page? Okay. So you have your prices right here. Um, I maybe, I, I'd maybe jump this part to the top. So process underneath, investment underneath, um, because you're gonna get people who see this and then they immediately wanna turn away. Whereas you might've gotten people that went like went straight to this page and just filled out the form because they'd already been sold to by your other pages. 
And then um, what this giant text does is I'm, I'm, people are lazy, just realistically, they're just going to look right here and that may actually push them away right off the bat. And so um, not that it's a problem having your prices here, your starting prices. I just think you'd be better off if you just threw the uh, contact form first, got those inquiries that you were going to get in the first place, and then you can get more information from then on um, there. I've experimented putting one on different pages right now. It's on my experience page. It's probably going to get its own page again. Um, but there's, there's nothing technically wrong with, with what you're doing here. Um, it's really just a preference thing. Great. So let's get started. And that takes me down here just like that. Love it. Doing pretty good here. Um, see how copy from past couples, uh, I would maybe put reviews from past couples, even just having that there would be, would be kind of beneficial. So she's everything you need in a photographer and more. She captured incredible moments. We are so grateful. We now have forever. Love it. So you guys, I'm sure, I'm sure this is not the entire thing that the client wrote, right? She probably has a bunch of other things, but she's went through and she's like edited it so that the main benefit of what that review was talking about was direct to the clients. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I would highly recommend it. See more kind words. So she probably has a review page we can go look at. And then she has a contact form going beyond two. I, I don't know what this means. So going beyond two, your story, you, your better half and their best friend, his older brother. Okay. Okay, so this is a section talking about you're not gonna ignore other guests at their wedding, give or take, right? Reading that right? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so yeah, and so Chochi said, great point, the review title, there's so little volume for variations for Charlotte's the wedding photographer, I'm not sure it's worth it for me. Uh, just take a look, there might be, even if it's something that only gets like 20, 20 views a month, it, it's worth having in there because you can, when you do stuff like that, you can rank for not just your main key term, but you can also rank for the, vari the various variations, which basically takes their... Um, like their search volume and adds it to yours. So even if it is only 20, it's still 20 more than what um, your original base was going to be. Um, okay. So going beyond two, this uh, is not super clear to me, um, but I, I, this is about making sure that the family is included in the moments because they're the person that got you there. Um, I'm okay with it. I think that there's a better opportunity to put something first here. Um, I understand that's a very important part of your brand and I don't disagree with it being an important part of your brand, but I think you have a better opportunity um, to throw in some resources for those clients and those couples to hit first. And then this could be like, this could be part of your process as, as a whole, or it could be put down a little bit lower on this page under the stuff that wouldn't get you direct, um, you know, that wouldn't get you a direct inquiry. By the way, as we're going through here, I would recommend, um, you are, you obviously have your, your main opt-in, right? Which is your, um, it's, it's your actual inquiry sheet. But if you only ask for inquiries, you're going to be missing a lot of those emails for people that maybe aren't ready to pull the fence yet, but you could get them to pull the fence, to not pull the fence, uh, pull the trigger yet, uh, but aren't ready to do it quite yet. You could offer some sort of resource, even if it's a blog post that you just turn into a PDF via like Google Slides. Um, you could you could get their email and start marketing to them right off the bat. So you're not wasting half the traffic that's coming to your site. Um, it's definitely something that uh, I've been working pretty hard on implementing throughout my site. Um, as the updates kind of roll out through that. Okay, so your helpful resources for planning your Charlottesville wedding. Um, I would even make this so it says Charlottesville wedding resources, uh, just so like if you can word it so that it's that's like right next to each other, that's probably a key term. Um, I would maybe take a look and just see. Um, this is great. You have best wedding venues in Charlottesville, Virginia. Awesome. Best Charlottesville engagement session locations. Again, great. These are two very, very solid base level um, blogs you should definitely have. Um, I also, I, I personally, I like proposal blogs. I haven't done a new one because I keep moving cities uh, and I just haven't found the spots all in uh, Orlando quite yet, but um, that's another great one to get. I used to get a ton when I was in Chicago uh, and this was before I knew anything about SEO. I just wrote a proposal location thing and I'd get you know, a bunch of different emails from um, guys who are looking to propose and don't really know what's going on. And the emails from those, the inquiries from those guys, always the funniest. Uh, I, I remember very specifically one of my favorite grooms literally just wrote help um, in the, <laughs> in the, in the notes. Uh, like the email title just said help. It was great. Um, elegant black wedding. So this, then this is maybe uh, more specific about, um, uh, about a specific wedding. I think you could probably make one more resource for them, but maybe it's proposals. Maybe those are your three um, resources you have, but maybe it's like planning your wedding. I would maybe put something like that here versus just like a, um, black tie wedding 
just just to give them more benefit. Like I'm going to be excited about this again. I really like your CTAs. Start dreaming is an amazing one. I want to click that just because uh, it says start dreaming. I think that's awesome. See ideas is great. Get inspired. Also great. Um, and then we have her bottom of her footer here. And it says Chochi is a Charlottesville wedding photographer who captures the unique story of her couples through genuine moments and timeless portraits. Chochi and her team are vaccinated so we can celebrate with you safely. We specialize in weddings, engagements, um, engagement sessions in Virginia cities such as Charlottesville and Richmond, as well as Washington, D.C. and destinations all around. OK, so um, I think that's great for right now. I will say I think that the. Uh, it depends on where you're at. All right. So everyone's got different areas. Everyone's going to have different cultures in their area. I will say that the vaccinated portion of it, um, I think not that it's not important. I just think it, it's, how do I say this? It's going to be, it's going to be important for a, a, like a limited amount of time. I think that eventually people are going to kind of move on from that. And I may, not, I may not want to have that in something that's like on every single page. I would definitely be telling my couples, Hey, I'm vaccinated. If that was the benefit I wanted, I want to show my team's going to be vaccinated. The photographer you're going to get to be vaccinated. I think that's a great thing to say, but I might put that in like an experience page or something like that, rather than at the footer where people are like less likely, likely to read it though. I will say again, where people are going to be really specifically worried about this is when it's top of mind and it's eventually going to be less top of mind. Um, so uh, that's Chochi's website. I, again, Chochi, I really like it. I think there's some things you could add. You could add a little more copy. You could have a, a few more sections. There might be like, you You might be able to do something like, um, let's take a look at my one of my newer pages rather than this one. Can't see the search bar. There it is. wedding photographer so if you guys didn't know i have several copies of my homepage on my site like there's different there's different versions of them um this is actually going to be the main one now that i'm located in orlando primarily uh, i just didn't want to mess up my rankings for the for the time being um and so towards the bottom of here i have some things where i've kind of started to add in um different things so i have my wedding uh planning resources here and then i have my core beliefs for the brand um this would be a great place by the way to put that vaccination thing like if that's a really really big selling point for you i think you could totally put that in something like this like a core belief section um you could also put an faq you could also put in um like a like a what you love about the city um and that'll help you get in some more key keywords and different variations that would be related to your niche that would help you get more people viewing that site and then again i would have an opt-in of some sort like I, whatever like planning resource you think your couples are looking for, I would even maybe ask my recent couples or past couples what they were stuck on when they were planning or ask my current couples what they're stuck on currently and then create a resource for them, give it to those couples because you're just going to look better and then um, also offer it to uh, people come to your site and maybe maybe create a couple of those and test them out. That way you're not wasting any traffic that's coming to the site. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, I'm not leaving Tampa. I moved to, so when I originally came out here, I was going to, I was going to live in Tampa. I loved Tampa uh, to an extent, but I've actually, it's weird, but I've come to Orlando for years and I've just kind of like, I know everything about the area. I like, I know where things are built. I know the history of certain, uh, of certain places. Um, I'm just more at home in Orlando. So I ended up moving to Orlando and that's where we're at now. Um, yeah, I would say, so Chochi for your vaccination part, um, definitely move it somewhere just so it's more obvious. Cause at the, at the footer, like people are just like, they don't read that stuff. That is really a section for keyword stuffing. Um, it's just, it's not going to, it's, it's not going to give you that much benefit. All right. I'm going to do literally one more. Okay. This is going to be the last one. We'll do this again. Every, um, I, I'm going to try and do one of these every month, at least one week. We're going to do just like, uh, like a uh, website reviews of some sort, or maybe even, um, pricing guide reviews. I haven't really decided yet, but I, I know for sure we're doing at least one of these a month. All right, Kelsey, we'll see. I'm going to, I'm going to do this fair. I'm going to throw it through this, this, uh, random name generator again. It's interesting that the, the like the, the, the CSS or HTML code, um, continuously comes, uh, like pops out and comes back in. Um, I don't really know why it does that. So let's see who's next. Okay. All right, Kelsey, I'm sorry. It's not you, but let's make sure. Um, let's drop this in right here. Let's make sure. Okay. Uh, our, I don't even know that, is, is the Alpha Sandrods photography team here? We in the, are we in the group? 
or in the live directly? Because I only want to answer people who are in the or who are in the live right now. I'll give you guys like one quick second here. I'm gonna check through the comments while we're waiting to see if this person's here. New comment. All right, cool. What's up, Stuart? All right. Or take a look at your website right off the bat here. Um, okay, so just some like UX things, right? Like some user experience, some, some design of your of your website. This section is taking up a ton of very, very valuable space. Let's be completely honest and transparent. When people come to your website, the space where they don't have to scroll to see, the first thing that they see is the most valuable section of your site because that is your first time you can sell to them that it's valuable to stay on the site and scroll around and look at other things. So having these social links all the way at the top and this like all this white space and this giant logo, okay, which is a very pretty drawing of a camera, but I literally cannot read what your brand name is. Um, it's, it's, it's killing a lot of space and it's not serving you in any way, shape or form. Okay. There's just no, you're getting no benefit from having this, this, this space here. Um, you could literally just have your menu like all the way up on one line. Maybe you have the, even if you just had your, your menu to where it was like to the right or the left of the camera or on either side of the camera, um, you'd be better off. But I will say, here's the problem with your logo. I can't read your brand name. Okay. Alpha sand rods. Like I it's the font is way too small. It's a script font. It's hard to read. If you're going to have a script font, you can't really like shrink them down. The idea when you're creating a logo or branding, right. Is that if I was to shrink it all the way down, if I was going to make it really tiny, it would still be fairly easy to read. Okay. Um, this tiny font, very hard to read. I just, I just genuinely can't, can't do it. Um, so, uh, that said, I also so far don't know where you're doing your work. Okay. That space that we're using up here for these social media links, which by the way, is one of the hardest way to retain clients. Um, they're they're Cause you, you have to put a lot of effort behind it. Th th this space is taking away from something that would tell them what you do. You, you could put that somewhere down here. I wouldn't have to scroll to find a welcome message. Welcome, by the way, does nothing for me. Okay. Does nothing for me at all. I want to see what you do, where you're at. Okay. It should be the first thing you're answering right off the bat. You can welcome me later on. That's fine. You can welcome me in the first body paragraph, but this generally doesn't do much. Okay. Then we're going down and we have a picture of you and your beautiful family. Um, the ones capturing your day in an authentic and photojournalistic way. Um, you might benefit from saying the photographers or something besides the ones. Um, I, I would just say like, just from a standpoint of giving me context, the photographers capturing your day in an authentic and photojournalistic way is better. I will also say that a lot of your clients who are not photographers probably are not going to be thinking about this word and they're most likely not sure what it means. Um, I say that because I know I've taught several photographers who didn't know what that word means. So just kind of thinking in terms of like the layman general person who's coming to your website, who's new to wedding photography, this is the only time they're ever going to be hiring a photographer. They probably don't know what this means. Candid, they do. Um, in the moment, like there's just different variations of that word that they might know better than photojournalistic. So that might be something in there. You do not need to thank me for visiting the website. It's totally unnecessary. Completely like don't need it. Um, okay. Now we're reading this sentence. Now I'll tell you, here's, here's where we're going to have a lot of edits, right? Why photography? My love for photography began more than 15 years ago when I found myself taking as many candid shots of my then almost 90 year old grandmother. I kept photographing every instance of her as if each, as if with each click of the camera, I would extend her stay on this earth. When she was gone in 2008, I found myself with countless photos that I brought back or that brought back precious memories. It was that it was at that point that I realized the power of photography as it allows us to have vivid memories and also serves as a channel of connection between present and future generations. Okay, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about what I might have problems with this, uh, with, with this copy. Can anyone guess? Like, what are we not hearing? What, uh, <laughs> what, what's kind of missing as we're going through? Um, by the way, I'm not laughing at your copy. I'm laughing at the comments that are going on. <laughs> Or gets pissed when they welcome at a restaurant, a restaurant too. You're not benefiting me, hostess. No, it's just it's unnecessary. It doesn't serve me. I want to hear about what you're doing. I, you don't need to welcome me to your website. It's not a, it's not a revolving door. You're not a Walmart reader. <laughs> um, and even then, I don't even think they they do that. Okay, what the client got out of it? Yeah. Okay, look, why photography? My love. Okay, I kept. I would. I found. 
all of those things are about you. Okay, this is great for an about page after you've already given a, a, a benefit to them, but the person you're selling to is not you. You are not the person you're going to sell to. So if that's the case, you need to talk to them from the benefit of where they're at. Even if you look at like, um, let's pull this up here. This first, this first paragraph, which is roughly the same paragraph we're on, on on your page. Your moments are your story. You should be free to experience them. As a wedding photographer in Orlando, I document authentic emotion and the story you create together. This is my promise. When I am your wedding photographer, you will not have to worry about your, your photographs. We're not really talking about me and my moments, and things that I benefit. This is, you can be yourself. So you pop the champagne, chase the moments you'll tell people about for the rest of your lives. We're talking to them about them. We're talking to them about the benefits of working with me. I'm not saying I did this and I'm, I'm a photographer for this because that makes them not the story. They're not the star of this, right? So they're not, they're not putting themselves into your words. You know, like when you show your, your best photographs and the idea is that your customer is going to look at that photograph and put themselves in it. Well, they should be doing the same thing with the copy. The copy should be about them, what the benefits are going to be from them. You're going to have to learn how to write and speak in a way that addresses those things. So um, every click tells a story, tells a story, allows to capture yours. I don't have a problem with 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 uh, every click tells a story, allows to capture yours because it does, it's like the first time you're talking to me about them. Um, besides, welcome them into your your uh, website. Um, when it comes to our photography approach, create simplicity with a twist of elegance. Summarizes create. Creative simplicity with a twist of elegance summarizes our artistic approach, drawing from our clients' personal tastes and style experiences are customized to preserve memories that will last a lifetime. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you, your average client is gonna get bored in the middle of this and stop reading it and go do something else. Um, try and speak in bullet points. So um, again, this is very specifically easy to read because I literally wrote one sentence at a time. This is important, this is important, this is important. If it wasn't important, right? If it was something that they could skip past, even if we go to like the experience page on my site, you notice your experience come first. I'll treat your wedding day with the same love and care as I would my own. Wedding photography is so much more than photographs. It's connection. There is absolutely no judgment. Those are all things that are talking about what the client's gonna benefit for. And they have more they can read, but it's like, it's it's subcategories. I want every single person, even the person who's kind of lazy and doesn't wanna read the full copy of the website to at least get the the, the highlights. And so kind of cleaning that up, making it a little easier to read is very, very important. Um, so then you put alpha New Jersey based wedding photographers. Again, maybe do some keyword research, make sure that that actually has search volume for it. Um, wedding photographers in New Jersey might be better. Um, that's fine. And then kind of signing it off as a letter doesn't make a ton of sense. It's not a letter. It's a opening part of your website. You're not writing a love letter to the, to the client. Um, and so that might be something where I, I kind of like, uh, I, I would adjust my approach and my understanding of the purpose of the, of the paragraph. The first paragraph on your website should be solving a problem for a client and explaining how you do it differently from everyone else or painting a picture of a moment that they genuinely want to have and then explaining how your process is going to like achieve that for them. Okay. It shouldn't, it's not, it's not a letter to them directly. I want them, I, I, I like, Again, we want them to see where they can they can kind of put themselves in like in the uh, in the paragraph. So, uh, for example, my opening paragraph on the Tampa page is the music is playing, people are dancing, the hotel pool is reflecting the DJ's lights. Mike grabs Jessica's hands, and they both run full force towards the pool and jump. Everyone's shocked, and the silence fills the air. As then, as they surface, the guests erupt in applause. They were married, and they did ex uh, everything exactly the way they wanted to. So. I'm a, I painted a picture and I said, put yourselves here. This could be you, right? And then I talked about how that's the type of thing that kind of like uh, drives me and that's what, what they're going to get from their photographs. So I, I did make it, like I did eventually start talking about me, but for the most part, it's about them and what they're going to get out of the benefit from it. Um, services. Okay, if these are the services, uh, I don't know what, I, I can't see these. So I, I don't know what I'm looking at generally most of these. I, I would prefer if you're going to put like sections, you're going to be like wedding, uh, weddings, special events, um, and family, then make those sections what, like make it obvious what they are. Like don't, don't make me have to scroll over to find them. Okay. Um, with that said, one page should serve one purpose. If this is your wedding page and this is your main business, then it should be about your weddings. If you're a family photographer and this is mainly about family like family photos, then that should be the page. 
If you want then to do other services, you don't necessarily have to list them on the main page because it's serving one main purpose. You can have another page that serves that purpose specifically. So let's say that you wanted to have uh, wedding photography as your main business, and then you want to do family photos. I would have two separate video or two separate pages that were keyworded out to serve two separate purposes. So very similar to how I have this Tampa wedding photographer page, and then I have um, the Orlando wedding photographer page. Uh, let's do that. And then Orlando dash wedding photographer. Great. So these, this serves a different purpose. Someone from Orlando who types in Orlando wedding photographer is gonna drop on this page. Someone who types in Tampa wedding photographer is gonna drop in onto this page. And then they're going to go through their own version of the of the funnel. Okay, same thing. If this was a different business, instead of having like a wedding photographer page, like a, a Tampa and Orlando wedding wedding page, I might have a wedding photographer page and a family photographer page, and they would both be completely keyworded differently. They might even have different menus, and they probably have a different client flow structure because I'm not going to be talking to them about their candid moments at their wedding if they want what if they want family photos. So that's something I would definitely like take into consideration is separating these things out. Um, I'm not seeing a ton of copy either. Uh, and this area, by the way, would, would be like, even if I was going to keep it the way you have it, which I wouldn't, I would put, uh, the, the location I'm, I'm photographing in. So New Jersey photo photography services, what uh, photography in New Jersey, something along those lines, right? I would, I would make that love notes from our clients. Again, this is just an option for you to put in a keyword. Like no one's searching for love notes for your clients. Okay. Um, they're looking for reviews though. Uh, and again, I would go through here. And I would definitely take out the main benefit. I would just make it about that main benefit. So in this case, uh, I was I would absolutely recommend this company to others. They were hired to do our engagement photos, and I was not really sure what to expect, but they were punctual, um, professional, and completely wowed us. Let's see if we can find something better. Most likely, I'm probably going to go um, punctual, professional, and completely wowed us. That's probably what I'm going to highlight here. But Alpha took her time finding every uh, kettle detail. Every kettle detail, are you, were you taking pictures of popcorn? Um, every kettle detail that would make the photos pop. I was very pleased with the photos um, and timely, and the timely manner in which we received our completed images. I would absolutely use them in the future. I might even, I'm either gonna go punctual professional and completely wowed us, or I'm gonna go, I would absolutely recommend them in the future. Like those are the two things I put in here. Um, there, was some, there was some English in here that wasn't super great. Um, I, so I, I maybe would kind of relook through here and make sure that this sentence doesn't sound awful um, or like we're missing some, some things. You can always adjust your client's testimonies if you need to, to make sure that they're like, re like readable. Um, so I would do that. And then, um, okay. New Jersey wedding photographer, New York wedding photographer, micro wedding photographer, elopement photographer, photo journal, photojournalistic photographer, NJ photographer, New York engagement photographer, New Jersey weddings, New York weddings or NY weddings, New York photographer. Okay. You're telling Google, you don't know what you're doing. So like you're, you don't know what the purpose of this page is. Google doesn't know the purpose of what your website page is without you giving it direct content. Well, someone who's looking for a New Jersey wedding photographer is going to be a different like there's going to be a different intention than someone who's looking for a New York wedding photographer. You can do weddings in New York. And if you want to solve that problem very quickly, you can do what I did here where I put Orlando photographer photography in Orlando, Florida. It's the main, right? Serving Tampa, Miami and destinations worldwide. I answered the question for them. I might. And then, and then I had the, the, the separate page that's directly targeting the other things. I would never do this. This is keyword stuffing and it doesn't, it, this does not benefit you. Google, you can go on YouTube. I'm sure there's going to be hundreds of videos that say this is good, but uh, they're going to be dated in most cases, or the person's not very good at what they're doing. So um, you don't need to keyword stuff like this. If you're going to have these terms, like I'll take all the ones for New Jersey and then fit them into your copy uh, for the New Jersey page, take all the ones for New York and fit them into the copy for your uh, New York page. If you want to do micro weddings and elopements, create a New Jersey and New York micro weddings and elopement page, and then talk about the benefits from there. Don't try and fit them all on one page because it's just realistically not going to serve your clients in the way that you want it to anyway. Um, for the rest of this page, I'd say like you're missing a ton of, you're missing a, a few things. First of all, uh, I there's no direct purpose for this page. I, you, you take photos, I get it, it's cool, but there's nothing after that point that tells me what you're specializing in or what you're good at. I'd rather see you be the expert in one thing as 
the clients see you, right? So if they, if you're an expert in wedding photography, then make this about wedding photography. Then you can have another page about family photographer and that page will show you as the expert in family photography. You can do that. Um, you're not really guiding me to go anywhere. The first button I can even click, like you don't have a CTA call to action um, to tell me where to go or what to do next. So if I was to click on this, which by the way, because it's a hover thing, I might just think that that's just a caption for the photo or something. I click on this and then what happens? Okay, now I'm at a portfolio page. Now, portfolio pages, again, I want to see your best 15 to 30 images. I just want to see them like in a slideshow. And then I want to see two buttons or one button or whatever, preferably one button, guiding me to the next step in your flow or your um, funnel for the website. Seeing all this like this, like it's overwhelming. Um, and if you're going to put in a slideshow, stop letting them auto scroll. I want to be in control. I don't want someone else to be in control. I want to be able to go to the next image. If I really like this image, I might want to look at it for a minute. I don't want the slideshow to decide, oh, we're, we're done now. We're going to go to the next thing. That is a really good use of lighting. I like this photo a lot. Um, that said, um, all these at the bottom, like you just, you just don't, you just don't need them. But notice there's no call to action. I'm not, I'm not being told to go contact you at this point. I'm not being told to, to um, go to the next step with you. I'm not being told what to do. I, I genuinely don't really know. The likelihood that someone's going to see this and then scroll all the way down to here to contact you is very unlikely unless you tell them to do it, in which case you'd need to put a sentence for that. But I would get rid of this section here, like this entire, all these photos, just have a slideshow, stop letting it auto scroll, put a button, put a call to action underneath it, and then have them go on the next set of your funnel. So funnel again can be homepage um, to portfolio, to about, to contact, or it can just be homepage wedding experience contact. It can be like any of those things, whatever your ideal funnel is, whatever sells you the best is where you can send them through. Um, okay. So that was like the last one. You got another page. Let's see. All right. I'm going to look through the comments here. I feel like we got, we got enough going on. Um, we've done some reviews. Like I said, uh, we're going to do these again. Um, we're going to be hanging out, uh, again, next month, going through the same thing. Um, we will have another live next week as, as well, but it won't be a website review. So you'll, you'll have another chance if we didn't get to you today. Let's run through these comments and make sure I'm not missing anything. Hey, what's up, Carmen? Um, great. So the story, yeah. So everyone's saying your story about your grandmother is like, it's perfect, but they're mostly saying it should be put in the about page or at the end of consultations. Like you can use that story. I don't think the story was a problem. It's just where you put it. Um, it's long and it's about you. Great. So they kind of understood that. Stuart says, that's why I wanted to get it reviewed. Thank you for the feedback. Absolutely. No problem, man. I'm pumped that we went through it. Um, there's another page. No, finish them all. Uh, we will, we will save some of these for next time. Unfortunately, we just didn't, I it can't be on here all day. I do have other things to do, uh, like build the rest of the content for you guys to see later on. We are working on a few things here, but I am pumped. You all came. Hopefully you got some value. If you got some value, go ahead and just drop in the comments. Let me know. Um, I always need feedback to find out if this is what the kind of content you guys want to see in the group. Um, if you do let me know, I can go through and make more of it. Otherwise I am uh, glad you guys all came. Thanks so much for hanging with me.